and 47th chapter, Psalms 147. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto God, for it is pleasant and praise is comely. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem, he gathereth together the outcast of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart, and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars, he calleth them by their name. Great is our Lord, and, uh, and of great power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifteth up the meek. He casteth the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises unto him with a harp. Who covereth the heavens with clouds, who prepareth rain for the earth, who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. He giveth to the beast his food, and to the young ravens which cry. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse, he taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. Praise the Lord, O church, praise thy God. Remain standing for prayer. Tonight, we are invited to pray because it is a privilege of ours. And also, we are invited to pray because it is a must. We cannot have a prayerless service. And therefore, tonight, we are going to pray in this international gathering. How are we going to do it? Am I going to pray in a foreign language? In your own language? It doesn't matter really how we do it as long as we do it with the heart. And I would like to invite you, brethren, ministers and laymen alike everywhere, to really pray tonight, to enjoy our privilege, and also to exercise or to respond to the responsibility of our day in our time. Shall we pray? Bendito Padre Celestial, Nuestro corazón está lleno de regocijo en esta Asamblea General por el grande privilegio de poder llegar a la vuelta de este centenario con todas las victorias y con todas las bendiciones que tú has enviado en nuestro camino. Padre, En esta noche, suplicamos la presencia de tu Espíritu, porque tú, mejor que nadie, conoces el mundo en que vivimos, un mundo en crisis. Pero, oh Dios, nos apoyamos en ti en esta noche, en tu Palabra, en tu Espíritu, para que este servicio Y todas estas actividades redunden para la gloria de tu nombre. Las múltiples necesidades que hay en los hogares de los que están, de los que se encuentran aquí, de cada iglesia, Padre, suple cada necesidad en el nombre glorioso de Cristo Jesús. Nos apoyamos en ti. Y creemos en ti, por lo que te alabamos con todo nuestro corazón. Alabado y ensalzado sea tu nombre, ahora y siempre jamás. Glorifícate en todo lo que se haga, Padre, en este servicio que te presentamos en el nombre de tu Hijo, para la gloria tuya, ahora y siempre. Amen. Thank you so much.
Hello, I'm Benny Triplett, and with me is Dr. Ray H. Hughes, First Assistant General Overseer of the Church of God, 1986. Congratulations, Brother Hughes, for being selected by the ordained ministers for an unprecedented third time to be a part of the leadership of the Church of God. Thank you, Brother Triplett. It's a real delight to be with you. What are your feelings in being asked to come from responsibilities for the third time to be a part of the leadership of the church? This is an exciting experience for me at this time in our history. You know, we are surrounded by so many complex forces in our day, and there are so many people who are looking on the dark side of life. But I believe for this church that has been in existence for 100 years, there is a very bright uplook and a very bright outlook. And to be a part of this uh, really excites me. We're all excited and having a great time celebrating in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a second factor that I want to just mention concerning your special feelings at this time, and that is not only are you a part of the leadership of the oldest Pentecostal church in our nation, but you are a part also of an international Pentecostal body in the World Pentecostal Conference, and you are also the president of the National Association of Evangelicals. What significance do you see from this coming together of three powerful forces in Christendom? You know, we were at the organizational meeting, the Church of God that is, of the National Association of Evangelicals. So we have been with that association since its very beginning. Right. And uh, we are very eager for the unity of the body of Christ. And uh, I see all of these things falling into place in these last days for the outreach of the gospel, that we might uh, enhance world evangelism. What a thrill it is to see what God is doing around this globe. We believe that we're going to be in for a fantastic second century in the I, Lord Jesus I Christ. believe that. I really do. I believe that God is doing something among us. In fact, in this meeting, there's an air of excitement. I think there is a real desire for renewal and a real desire for the Word to be central to all that we do. Amen. Thank you for being with us. Amen. I'm delighted. Every day they pass me by I can see it in their Empty people filled with care, headed who knows where. On they go through private pain, living.
yes, they need. I said they need. Hallelujah. Following the regents of the Wallace Sibley, a powerful, anointed, dynamic gospel preacher is coming to minister to you on the subject, the church triumphant in the word. Continue to, to prepare your hearts to receive the word of the Lord. Thank the Lord for the good thing that he's doing for us. I appreciate the words of Brother White. And I thank the Lord for the beautiful spirit that is in this place. Praise the Lord. God is good to us. And we are glad about it. Ever since receiving... A letter from the general overseer informing me that I was selected to speak tonight. I have been somewhat dreaming. I do need your prayers. I'm just a plain old preacher.
and I did not attempt to prepare a General Assembly sermon. But I want to preach the word. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to ask you to just point your hand toward me and pray for me. God will touch and the anointing will be here and present. Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for this great church. We thank you for Jesus, your precious son. Thank you for the way in which we worship, singing, praying, the giving, and every act of worship. We've come now to the preaching of the word. Send the anointing and touch us together. Touch these lips of clay. Touch me. Touch your people. Touch us together. We will receive your word as the engrafted words of God, which is able to save our souls. Ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. The subject that has been assigned me the church triumphant in the word I shall read from 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 16 and 17 all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works just a few days ago I read a statement out of the Church of God of Daniel from one of our church leaders he was speaking concerning our theological position he said that our theological position is soundly and solidly rooted in the Word of God. And another leader said the Word of God alone gives us an unshakable and unmovable and sure foundation. Hundreds and perhaps even thousands of times, quite a number of us repeat over and over, we believe in the verbal inspiration of the Bible in one God eternally existing in three persons namely the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost we do not believe in the verbal inspiration of the Bible simply because we repeat it constantly but we repeat it constantly because we do believe and the verbal inspiration of the Bible we believe that this is the Word of God the Holy Word which comes from a holy God and was delivered by holy men it contained holy precepts treats of holy things and was designed to make us holy hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 This is why from the beginning of the church, rules were established to stabilize the few members uh, that remained true to the church and was not overtaken in the false teaching that cropped up around Barney Creek and Camp Creek. Brother Sperling and Brother Bryant and together and they made a few recommendations one of which was the church will stand for the whole Bible rightly divided. The New Testament is the only rule for faith and practice. It seemed as if A.J. Tomlinson procrastinated in, in uniting with the little church because he wanted to make sure that this was the church of God that St. Paul the Apostle had written about and had spoken about in 1 Corinthians 1 and 2 in 2nd Corinthians 1 and 1 
in 1 Timothy 3 and 5, in 1 Corinthians 10 and 32, in 1 Corinthians 5 and 9, and in Galatians 1 and 13, and also in Acts 20 and 28. The scripture makes it quite clear that the church of God is biblical in name and is in fact the name that God wants for his church. The church came out of the word. The church was born because of the word. The church was founded by the word. The church belongs to the word. And one day the church is going back with the word. Hallelujah. 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 First Corinthians 1 and 2. Unto the church of God which is at Corinth. To them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus. Call of these saints with all that is in every place. Call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Both theirs and ours. Second Corinthians 1 and 1. Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ. By the will of God. And Timothy our brother. Unto the church of God. Which is at Corinth. With all the saints which are in all Asia. First Corinthians 10 32. Give none offense. Neither to the Jews. Nor to the Gentiles. Nor to the church of God. 1 Corinthians 15 and 9 For I am the least of the apostles and not need to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Galatians 1 13 For you have heard of my conversation in times past in the Jews religion how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. 1 Timothy 3 and 5 for if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Hallelujah! 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 Acts 20 and 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and unto all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he has purchased all oh, with his own blood. He bought the church with his own blood. He paid the price for this church. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to tell you tonight, we aren't just anybody. But we are somebody. We are part of the church that's going somewhere. This church is not some fly by night, 90 day wonder. This church came out of God, was purchased by God, and this church is headed back to God. Hallelujah. If you believe that, swing your hand and tell him thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus purchased this church with his own blood. Hallelujah. I, I don't mean that he went to sleep, but he died for this church. He paid the price for this church, for the church of God. This is why Jesus said upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell, the authority of hells, the powers of hells, the abilities of hell, the demons of hell shall not overthrow my church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He bought this church. He died for this church. And he has a right to name this church whatsoever he will. He named the church of God. Hallelujah. My God. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I'm trying to tell you that it's biblical in its name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
God bought it, but Jesus bought it. Amen. The Holy Ghost brought it. Hallelujah. The angels bought it. The devil bought it. But look at the people that sought the church. We sought it. We found the church. Woo! We found the church. Hallelujah. Glory. My God. Amen. Somebody might have thought that the name Church of God came out of a 10 gallon hat. They were pulling names out of a hat. I want to tell you it from the word of God. We didn't spin the bottle around and the bottle just lazily and luckily stopped on Church of God. No, no. We didn't slip from chair to chair on a musical chair to name this church. No, no. We didn't break the chicken's wishbone to name this church. No! No! Oh! Woo! Good God Almighty! I want to tell you, my God, we didn't walk the cakewalk to name this church. But I want to tell you something. God! Name his church. It belongs to God! Oh! Woo! Good call, my. Oh! Excuse me, Brent. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've heard of funny things going on around the country, but I'll tell you what, we didn't dance around and got in some tizzy singing Mamby Pamby, name me Andy to name this church. I said, God name this church, church of God. And if God did it, that ought to settle it. It's biblical in his name. Somebody say amen. amen. Much prayer and fasting, waiting on God, the church of God. Now I know there are a few who are itching, just itching with their prefixes, with their suffixes, but I'm gonna stay right in the middle of the road. Church of God, just like the Bible says, just like the book says it, just like he says it, Hallelujah. Right in the middle of the road. Bishop C. H. Mason. Bishop C. P. Jones, the founder of the Church of God in Christ. When they seek to get their charter, Bishop Mason's conviction was that the church should be named the Church of God. But he was too late. We already had our name. Amen. So Bishop Mason named his church to the closest thing that he could get, the Church of God in Christ. Hallelujah. We are the Church of God in Christ. We are part of the assembly. We are the apostle overcoming holiness. We believe in keeping the Sabbath and every day holy. We are Pentecostal holiness. We are true vine. We believe by faith. We believe in John the Baptist baptism. We believe in a methodology. We believe in a Presbyterian. We believe in Catholicism as it relates to the worldwide church because we are the church of God. But on the other hand, I wouldn't give two cents in nobody's money 
if all I had was a name. I had a name by the two cents, but my wife said, you might offend somebody. So just two cents. If all I had was a name, if there was no love in my church, if there was no spirit of God, if there was no clean living, if there was no purity, if there was no holiness, I wouldn't have any part of it. Amen. Sometimes it seems if we are putting our priorities in the wrong perspective, Amen. Oh yes, I believe in having beautiful places of edifice. But first, let the Spirit of God be there. Amen. I want to be where God is. Hallelujah. You can have your padded pews. Now, please. If God is there, make it as beautiful as you like. But if I had to de decide between one or the other, the padded pews of God, give me Jesus. Amen. I know there are those that prefer the padded pews and the wall of wall carpet and the pipe organ. But thank me to God, I want to go where God is. I want to go where God's word is being proclaimed. Let me be where God is and moving in his church. That's where I want to be. The text state is scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect or complete, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. Contrary to the belief of some, that the general assembly is for three aims. Shop in. Eat in. Politic in. And while this may be the philosophy, of a few we meet here to study the scripture to scrutinize our teachings to check our doctrine to review our bylaws to test and examine our goals and our objectives and to make mid-course adjustment to perfect them if our church the church of god will ever survive another hundred years she'll do it because of consistent Biblical doctrine. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. If the church, the church of God, will ever survive another hundred years, she'll do it because of consistent biblical doctrine. She won't make it to just singing conventions. She won't make it just with Wednesday evening spaghetti dinners. She will not make it on just Sunday evening film festivals. Not on Saturday night fish fries. But because of sound biblical doctrine. Hallelujah. Biblical doctrine. Hallelujah. It'll get the job done. We stand for the whole Bible. Rightly divided, not just the Old Testament, not just the Psalms, not just Revelation, or the historical books, or the major minor prophets, but from Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and to Revelation 22 and 20, he which testifies these things saith 
surely I come quickly amen even so come Lord Jesus and the grace of the Lord Jesus will be with you always from Genesis to the Revelation we believe in the whole Bible rightly divided hallelujah hallelujah check any major denomination that once flourished but have now become extinct you'll find one thing that was prevailing one thing that did not have sound doctrinal commitments and it was the mediocrity of the word of God but I'll tell you what God is pleased a church with sound doctrine coming from the sound solid word preached by a solid preacher the clean word the clean doctrine and a clean man preaching my God you cannot beat that kind of combination nowhere to save your life hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus can I stop and preach right here remember the occasion that the scripture gives that Peter walked on the water I believe that right here tells us or show us that a church could either sink or float it is up to you Jesus fed the 5,000 men not counting the women and the children possibly 15,000 people the Bible said he sent the disciples across the Galilee to Capernaum the Bible said the, the boat was tossed with waves because the wind was contrary but in the fourth watch of the night Jesus walked on the water toward his disciples the disciples thought they saw a ghost they were so fearful they were so superstitious they cried out for fear but Jesus cried it is I be of good cheer be not afraid the Bible said when Peter heard this Peter said Lord if that be you over there bid me to come or tell me to come and he said and I'll come walking on the water the Bible said the wind was contrary water was boisterous but Jesus uttered one word he did not say have courage he did not say have faith he did not say have hope he simply said come what I'm trying to say right now is when Peter got to the edge of that boat it might have taken some courage and faith to get out of the boat if that boat was shaky and uncertain Peter wanted to get on something solid he wanted to step out there right on the word he found the word calm and he walked on the word I want to tell the church of God if you will ever stay afloat you're going to do it because you stay on the word if you get off the word you're going under if you get off the word you're going down so the Bible says Peter walked on the water toward Jesus after a while he got comfortable he got at ease in Zion 
he thought he was doing a little more than the other boys and could I just imagine that he looked back at his brother Andrew and at his friend John and James and the other fellows and say hey boys look at me hallelujah hey man he got himself in trouble he took his eyes off Jesus and he stepped off the word you are headed for ruins if your eye is not on Jesus and if you're not standing on the word on Christ the solid rock I stand all of the ground all of the ground all of the ground is sinking sand you're gonna fail when you get off the word Peter started sinking and I don't know how many times he went under but he was going down possibly for the last time but he had enough clear judgment to cry out to the Lord possibly all was seen was a hand waving and he said Lord save me Jesus lift him up out of the water put him back on the word and they went back to the boat together I want to tell you we got to stay on the word on the word on the word of God then you get off the word you're in trouble and you're head for ruin It is sound biblical doctrine that keeps the church in balance. Jesus commands us to search the scriptures for understanding. Some biblical doctrine gives some biblical doctrine give the church balance and hold the church in the middle of the road. Jesus said, "For in them." Ye think ye have eternal life. These are they which testify of me. I've watched with amazement the mother hen as she scratches in the yard for food for herself and for her little chicks. She scratches a while, she finds something, and she eats it. She scratches again. She finds some more food and she gives it to her little chicks. And they eat together. That is something like what God wants his church to do. No congregation has the autonomous power of authority in this doctrine. This doctrine is ours together. The Bible said that we are laborers together. You don't do your thing over there. And I'll do mine over here. You don't have something on the upper states. And down in my state, we have something altogether different. The Bible said much about togetherness. We are laborers together. We are workers together. He said we sit together. We are followers together. We are raised together. We sit together. And when we do all these things together, he said we are caught up together and so shall we ever be with the Lord this is ours together not your thing over there and mine over here the Word of God also is not just to make you dance and be happy but for instruction and instructing you in ways of righteousness and correcting you when you error. Listen to the Apostle Paul words to the young minister Timothy, 2 Timothy 4, 2 to 5. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves 
teachers having itching ears, they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned on the fable. But watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. There are some that would rather hear jokes and would rather hear fables. They would rather hear poems. But the Bible said, preach the word. Preach the word. Preach sound doctrine. Stay right in the word. He did not say preach gospel, but the gospel. Preach the gospel. The apostle Paul said, because it is a power of God under salvation. So preach the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The atheists, skeptics, agnostics might ask, how can this be possible just because of the word? I'll tell you, don't sell my God short. Jesus said all things are possible to him that believeth. Hebrews 11, 1 and 3. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The Bible said, for by it, the elders also have obtained a good report. Verse 3 said, we understand through faith that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made by things which do appear. I'm trying to tell you that it was the word of God that brought this world into existence. God spoke and so it was. Amen. One writer said that God just stepped out on space and he hung on to nothing until he made something. He said that God looked around and saw that the earth was hot and barren. God stepped over to the edge of the world and spat out seven seas. He said that God walked and where God walked, his foot stepped, hallowed the mountains up and buzzed the valleys out. And God smiled and said, that is good. I want to tell you that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Hallelujah. Signs can take a back seat because God did it all by himself. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm amazed in Genesis 18 and 14 when the angel of the Lord spoke to Abraham because there were some doubts and the angel of the Lord said to Abram, is there anything too hard for God? Can you think of anything that's too hard for God? I want to tell you that if God can create a world in six days, God can do anything. Amen. If God can take an iron axe head and make it swim and walk and make a donkey laugh and talk, I said God can do anything. Amen. Yes. Amen. If God can take one man and go out in one day with one jawbone and kill a thousand Philistines, I said God can do anything. Amen. If God can take one angel and go out one night and kill 185,000, I said God can do anything. Oh, yes. My God, if God can take a whale and let him swim around the world and then stop in due time and let old Jonah the preacher out, I said God still can do anything. Oh, yes. Amen. If God can take some birds out of the mulberry tree and make those birds out of marine sentry to warn David of the approaching enemies, I said, God can do anything. If God could touch a spider and make that spider become a master welder to web David in to hide him from his enemies God still can do anything 
Hallelujah. I'm not finished yet. If God can take a rooster, a barnyard rooster, hallelujah, and let that rooster preach a sermon or maybe a sermonette, amen. The soldiers heard cook a doodle doo, but Peter heard you liar, you liar, repent, you liar, repent, you liar, woo, ah, all right, hallelujah, my God, if God can call the rooster to preach like that, what about men with vocal cords, with strong parties? I said, get up and preach the word. Preach the word. I close with this, this phase. If God can take a buzzard and make him out of a helicopter and by the time he almost landed transformed into a waiter prepared some food and gave it to the man of God if God could take the scavenger bird and clean him up sanctify him clean him up how much more can God in fact, I want to say this. You and I were just like the buzzard. You and I were scavengers. We were no good. We had no good in us. But God reached down, picked us up, washed us out with his blood, cleaned us up. Sanctified us, made us holy. Oh, made us holy. Ah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The Bible says, No, ye not. Know ye not that we will not inherit the kingdom of God? But listen what he said. No drunkards, no effeminates, no liars, no adulterers, no idolaters will inherit the kingdom of God. But then he said, and such were some of you. Talking about us. And such some of you but now you're sanctified but now you're justified now you're clean through the way how raise your hands tell him thank you thank you thank you I'm going to try to close. The word brought me here. The church is biblical in lifestyle. We used to sing songs. The word of God brought me here. We've sang songs years ago. Everything is going down. But the word of God. We sing get in the word and stay there. Till Jesus comes we sing in the word I found a hiding place the church is style as a soul saving station a spiritual hospital just for sinners but the word of God is the medicine and it's good for whatever ails you the Bible says the word finds us the word draws us the word searches us the word pulls us down it builds us up it sets us free it makes us alive hallelujah are you alive tonight are you alive in Jesus
Jesus? Then say amen. Hebrews 12, 13 and 14. For the word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the biting asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joint and marrow, and of the discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. Neither there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open under the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I read somewhere that the word could be your hammer. The crushing hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. It could be the mirror that you can see yourself. The word going to show you you. Amen. You can turn in front of that mirror and all you're going to see is you. The word is the same thing. Get in the word. See yourself. See what you look like. See where you come from. See where you're going. The word has the threefold ingredient. It's quick and powerful and sharper than in a two-edged sword. I want to tell you, you can't lose with the stuff you use. Hallelujah. Amen. The boss has lost, and you cannot lose with the stuff you use. And the devil can't win for the shape we are in. He cannot win. We're going to stay with the word until Jesus comes. Hallelujah. Let me close with a little passage from the book of Job. The Bible said that Job, the servant of God, was perfect, upright, feared God, shun evil the Lord said that he holds fast to his integrity and I'm going to style the integrity as the word when things started going bad and rough in Job's life he lost all that he had but he held on to God and on God's word I want to tell you things may not go all the time the way you want them to go but you hold on to God. Stay in the word. The Bible said that Job lost uh, his children, his seven sons, his three daughters. He lost uh, his best closest friends. He lost uh, his wealth. He lost uh, his health. Uh, but one thing he held on. He held on uh, to his God. And he held on uh, to the word of God. In fact, he might have said, I don't know why I've lost my health. I don't know why I lost my wealth. I don't know why I lost my children. I don't know why my wife has lost her respect for me. One thing I know, I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know that God is alive. I know that my Redeemer liveth. And he shall stand upon the earth in the latter days. After my flesh, the skin worms shall destroy my body. Yet in my flesh shall I see God. Him I shall see for myself. Mine eyes shall behold God and not another. He was trying to tell us if I hold on to God and hold on to his word, I'll be all right if they take my body and deposit my body in the cold, cold ground and the worms, or shall I say the maggots, eat up my body. And if somehow birds catch those maggots or those worms and the birds eat the worm and a hawk catch the bird 
and the hawk eat the bird and an eagle catch the old hawk and eat the hawk and go to yonder's mountain one day when the Lord the Lord himself the Lord shall the sin from heaven with a shout voice of an archangel trump of God the Bible says the dead in Christ the dead in Christ those of the word those that are sanctified those that are Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized gonna call them the eagle up on the mountain gonna give up the hawk the old hawk gonna give up those birds the birds gonna give up the worms the worms gonna give me up I'm gonna stand before my call I'm gonna stand before my call oh! Woo! right before God if you hold on to his word the church is gonna sweep triumphant because we have held to God's word I don't know where you are in God and I don't know where you have kept the word but I would keep it in my heart I want to extend an invitation to all of you to each of you to any of you who feel the need for prayer if you want to make an altar right where you are if you want to come up near the front someone will pray with you will you please stand will you please stand will you come now because you know better than anyone else what you need from God what you need God to do for you where are you in his word are you holding fast to God's word where you come well the others who will come we'll wait for you others will come and pray with you where you come that's right Jane. come and pray with them are the others who will come are the others who will walk out Where are you in the word? Can you truthfully say that the word has taken its abode in my life? And should he come now? I'm ready. I'm waiting on him. Are the others who will come? We'll wait for you. Are the others who will come? Will you walk out now? There are others who will come. Let God work on your behalf tonight. He's waiting on you. Can you truthfully say that the word is firmly hid in my heart and I'm ready? Hallelujah! Are there others who will come? Are there others who will come? God bless. Hallelujah. 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 Pray, saints, pray tonight. Father, touch them tonight. Father, hide them in your word tonight. Let the word be a lamp to the feet and a light to their pathways. Sink your word deeply in their hearts that when the trouble comes, their Lord, they'll find a hiding place in you. Touch them afresh and anew in the name of Jesus. We love you, our Father. We thank you tonight. We praise your holy name. Hallelujah.
Jesus said if we would abide in him and his word abide in us, ask what we will and it shall be done. Those of you who will come and pray, come seek the Lord. The rest we're going to dismiss you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah.